Tomahawk TV News, Montague County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Hello, this is Morgan Dyer with this week's newscast. In this week's edition of Tomahawk TV News, Cole Jackson will give his sports report. William Aitz will tell you the latest on the weather. We will take yet another look into the future with the 2015 seniors. See the newest digital media movie production of Silent Halls. Take a look at the blood drive. See what the dual credit students have to say about college classes and have a look into the car show. Every year at Nakona High School, we put on two blood drives, one in the spring and one in the fall. These blood drives are put on through the American Red Cross and they are put on so that students can help save lives of people who are in need of blood. Today we're interviewing some people who have had experiences giving blood before. Have you ever given blood before? Uh, yes, yes I have. How are your previous experiences? Uh, they were good. They were good. It only stings a little bit and me and my friends all race each other. So you can give blood the fastest, so that's fun. <laughs> Why is giving blood important to you? Uh, I like helping people. Okay. I'm here with Kyle Sintel who just got done giving blood and we're going to see what his experience was like. Uh, it was pretty good. Didn't really hurt that bad. Probably the finger part was the worst part, but other than that, it was pretty smooth. And you gave double, right? Yeah, so they like take the stuff, something out of your blood and put oh. something back inside of you or something like that. I don't know. Okay, well, thank you. What made you um, want to give blood? Because uh, you're saving a laugh. Kind of kind of makes you feel good when you're saving a laugh. So. I'm here with Jake Dingler, who has recently given blood at the Nocona High School Blood Drive, and we're just going to ask him a few questions. What made you want to give blood? I felt like saving people. <laughs> How do you feel now that you've given blood? Pretty lightheaded and good, I guess. I don't know. Do you feel accomplished now that you've given blood? Yes. Is it important to give blood? Yes. Can you expand on that? It's saving people's lives. I don't understand why it's not important. I'm here with Cry Pepper, who has given blood before in the past, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her experience. Well, when I gave blood, it seemed, you know, cool and stuff, trying to get that cord for graduation. And <laughs> so I'm giving blood, and it wasn't fun, but I did it anyway. And so I gave blood, thought I did my part and everything. Well, a few weeks later, the Red Cross calls me on the phone, and they're like, hey, you need to call us back. We have some serious information about your um, blood. And I was like, oh, Never called them back, didn't think anything about it. Then I get this huge letter in the mail about how I can never give blood again. So I finally I called them back, and I was like, what is this letter saying? I can't give blood. And they're like, oh, we're so sorry. We had to destroy all of the blood that you donated, all of the blood that I donated. <laughs> we had to destroy it because your blood is reactive, and if we give it to someone, they will die. And I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, we're so sorry that you have a rare blood type or whatever, and um, just you have to sign a form that says you promise to never give blood again. Okay. That's okay. a pretty scary experience there. So is it like a hereditary thing or? Yeah. It is? Blame my mom, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll... Once again, we have more senior interviews. We are extremely proud of all of the seniors and are excited to get the chance to look into their futures. Graduation coming up, how do you feel about it? I'm excited but nervous. I feel pretty good, but I'm really, really, really nervous. Well, I mean, I'm pretty stoked, you know. High school's been great, but it's time to get out, I guess. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to leave. I am so excited, and I'm ready for this school year to be over. I'm so excited. I'm ready. And what do you plan on doing after you graduate? I think I'm going to take a year off to try and get some money raised up, so that way I can go and get my own place and stuff like that, and then worry about school. Well, I'm going to Texas A&M University up down in Corpus Christi to major in music education so I can become a band director someday. I'm going to be attending Ogle Cosmetology School, get my license, and... Um, I plan on waiting a year and then possibly going to um, college to go be a police officer. I plan on studying dental hygiene at Wichita Falls. Um, I think I'm going to plan um, attend NCTC, but I'm going to wait a year to go to college, so just to get money and stuff. And what will you miss most throughout high school? 
probably just seeing all my friends. That's going to be the thing and the organization of every all of it. So I'll probably miss my friends and my teachers the most. Um, that's about it. <laughs> Nothing else? No, I don't think so. My friends and a couple of my teachers. <laughs> probably my teachers and my friends. Probably my friends and, like, getting to go and do things with them and stuff. Everyone. Just getting to come to school and getting the opportunity to come and learn and stuff like that. Just getting all that good stuff. What's your favorite high school memory? Probably when I scared everybody on MDA day. They thought I died. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite high school memory. Um, qualifying for regionals my sophomore year in golf. Getting to play or getting to be in band with my brother. Making state for Southern Ensemble my senior year. It's just it's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Honestly, I can't think of one, but um, just hanging around with my friends as we were building the bonfire. Hello, Texas. This is Willie with your weather. This week will be just as active as it has been in the past three weeks, but I have some good news. The state was in 100% drought, now only 16%, and the way it looks, we may be looking at 0% drought for the state, but we have to get through the flooding and severe weather first. This graphic will sum up the week. There will be flooding from the Panhandle down to West Texas. There will be severe weather from Southeast Texas up to North Texas, and in North Central and southwest Texas, severe weather and flooding will be possible up to 8 to 12 inches of rain. The severe weather throughout the week will not be every day. It will be off and on thunderstorms throughout the week. Threats for severe weather are up to tennis ball size hail, winds in excess of 70 miles per hour, and some tornadoes. Now here's your seven day local forecast. There will be a 50% chance of thunderstorms today with a high in the 80s and lows in the 50s. There will be a slight chance for thunderstorms tomorrow but not promising highs in the 80s. Wednesday through Sunday highs will be in the 80s and 70s with lows in the 50s with a 60% chance of thunderstorms those days. That's the way the thunder crackles. See you next time. The environmental science class here at the high school is trying to make our campus prettier and learn how to grow vegetables as well. This class has done a lot for the campus landscape this past year. Hello everyone, I'm Miranda Garcia with Tomahawk TV News, today with Ms. Perky, the environmental science teacher, to talk about how she is redecorating over the, um, around the campus. So Ms. Perky, why did you guys decide to redecorate around the campus? With one of the ideas with environmental was to actually get the kids outside and start seeing how we could beautify the campus. And one of the reasons we chose to start improving the campus was to talk about succession and to be able to stop some of the succession that is actually occurring on our school property. Oh, okay, so did you guys run into any problems while you were beautifying the campus? Absolutely. We ran into many problems. One of them was uh, the lovely weather and all the rain. Another was when we were actually removing the stump, we came across and found out how difficult it was to remove stumps and how deep we needed to go. Okay, and with all this rain, did you think it helped or caused a lot of more problems than it usually did? The rain ended up keeping us in the classroom more than it did outside. It made the ground easier for us to be able to place uh, the bricks and able for us to um, kind of organize a little easier than with the dry ground. Oh, okay. And so how with redecorating the campus, how does this come with environmental science class? With the class, we've looked at the impact of how human population has changed and um, how it's affected part of our landscaping in the area that we were at. Um, this was one that was man-made by dropping the gravel and so forth for different projects around campus. Um, I believe this was also an area that they used prior to resurfacing the track many years ago and it just has not had the sunlight to be able to regrow um, um, grass and so forth so we've just had a lot of runoff in this area. Okay and what are some of the hands-on activities the students did? 
Some of the hands-on activities were drawing up the blueprints on what they, their major projects were. They did two major landscaping projects this year and they had blueprints and they had to come together as a class and decide what blueprint they liked the best, why they chose the blueprints, um, getting the supplies and starting to assemble everything. Other projects we've done is they've grown plants throughout the year, um, they've worked on some water resources and just seeing the input behind that. Oh, okay, and what do you hope the students learned from this? Um, I honestly hoped that they learned from the idea that they can impact the environment and that they can change the environment um, based off of recycling, um, littering, based off of just where we do things. Also the idea of when they, future, when they look at a future home or a building, they can look at some of the aspects of how the environment is going to impact the building. For example, flooding or if there's areas of cracks and different things, why they would want to build up to the different areas on the foundations. And that was Ms. Perky with some information about beautifying the school campus. I'm Mariana Garcia signing off with Tomahawk TV News. Hello, this is Cole Jackson and welcome to this week's edition of Tomahawk Sports. In this week's local sports news, this time of year at Nocona High School, the sports are all finished up and students are getting ready for their next upcoming seasons. However, sports banquet this year will be held on May 18th. And national sports news, last week after months of investigating, the NFL found out that it was more probable than not the Super Bowl champion Patriots equipment managers did intentionally deflate the game balls before the AFC championship game. They also discovered that it was more probable than not that Tom Brady knew about it. The NFL suspended Tom Brady four games for the 2015 season. He and the players' organization appealed the suspension and tried to reduce the number of games. Commissioner Roger Goodell will be the one hearing the appeal. The NBA has named their MVP Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors, who edged out James Harden to be named basketball's most valuable player. Steph Curry was well-deserving after having one of the greatest seasons that anyone has ever had. Odell Beckham Jr. of the New York Giants was selected for the Madden NFL 2016 cover. Odell was voted in by people who play the video game. He is most known for the fantastic one-handed touchdown catch last season. The NHL and NBA playoffs are creating real excitement as second round play is going down to the wire. That's it for this week slash a little bit of last week in sports. Be sure to stay tuned for more sports coverage in the coming future. I'm Cole Jackson signing off for this week's Tomahawk Sports. <laughs>《No Kona》has been hosting the Cruising No Kona Vacari Car Auction. People from all over come to participate in this event. Participants can enter a car to be auctioned off, bid on a car during the auction, and cruise No Kona in their cars. There are many types of cars entered in this auction. The cars range from the 1920s Model T to the latest and greatest Mustang, and almost everything in between. The rain we experienced this year did not stop any of the festivities. There are many booths set up around downtown. The car auction guaranteed a good time for everyone, and that's what we got. Good job, Nokona. The digital media class has made many short films this school year, and they are working on yet another. Jocelyn Wadlow went to talk to the director of this film, Kieran Gibbs, and an actor, Braden Skinner, to see what they had to say about the movie. Hello, this is Jocelyn Waddle here reporting with Tomahawk TV News. I'm here asking Kieran Gibbs about the new movie that the audio video class is producing. What is the movie about? Demonic possession, some dead teens mostly. Why are you making the movie? Um, mainly just to you know, differentiate from detention bites as much as possible. And me and Rico just kind of, Luis Rico could not be here today. He's a little camera shy. But um, me and Rico just sat down at the computer one day and were like, hey, what's the most ridiculous thing we can come up with? And boom, there was a script. What is the reaction you're hoping to get from it? Ah, uh, good, good mojo mostly, but you know it's it's kind of it's kind of a like pleaser to me if someone walks up. You shouldn't be making that. I, I, that's my favorite kind of thing because I like to push boundaries, and that's just my deal. How do you feel it's coming along so far? Um, I feel like it's coming along really well. We're the cast loves each other. We're getting good with makeup, and our crew is kind of like a well-oiled machine, and it's just coming along really well. 
Now I'm here talking with one of the stars from the movie, Braden Skinner. What is the reaction you're hoping to get from the movie? Um, I hope that it just blows everybody's socks off. Who is your character in the movie? Um, my character's name is John, and uh, he is the leader of the pack of people that are frightened. Can you relate to your character in any way? No. Do you ever have difficulties getting into character? Yes, actually, I'm ne I am never into character now that I think about it, but I have trouble all the time. Thank you, Kieran and Brayden. The audio video productions film Silent Halls is still in production, and when it is finished, be sure to check it out on the NHS Digital Media's YouTube page. Back to the studio. Thank you for the information, Jocelyn. Here at Nocona High School, students are given the chance to take college classes at the NCTC campus in Bowie. We wanted to know how the students felt about this program, so Alexis Page went to the halls to find out more. This is Alexis Page reporting from Tomahawk TV News. We're in the halls of Nakona High School asking dual credit students about their classes. Why did you choose to do dual credit? Uh, I just wanted to get an early start so I can get through college years faster so I can make more money easier, better. I chose to do dual credit because I thought like maybe doing it earlier could, I could get a little experience about how college will be and if I could be able to take it on and stuff. Uh, I chose it so college would be easier. What courses did you decide to take? Uh, I took English and uh, History because that's what I'm good at, really good at. So quicker, easier, like I said. That's why I did everything I did. I decided to take English because I'm really good with like essays and stuff like that. So uh, English and History. Would you recommend the courses you took this year to the new dual credit students? Yes. Because they really help you get like ready for college. Like they help you create study habits. Yes. Why? Because it's worth it and it's really not that hard. What did you like about the course you took? I liked that it was a smaller class. Like it made you feel like you were still in high school taking like high school classes, but you were actually getting your college credit. And I liked it because all my friends could help me out with it. Do you feel the courses were worth taking during high school than waiting until after? Yes, because you only have to take it once rather than taking two separate classes. You get a, cre a college credit for a class you took in high school. Definitely because it'll be easier now while you have people to help you than when you're all by yourself in college. Thank you for tuning in, Nokona. We hope to see you again next week. Tomahawk TV News, Montague County's only newscast, coming at you from Nokona High School.